Welcome back, and uh, the illustrious uh, Earl of Sterling, uh, Tim Alexander, is here. Always get a kick when you use your titles, uh, Tim. And, of course, you were a solid American. In fact, I think that your uh, ancestor was the alternate general that assisted and financed a lot of the revolution with Washington. No, he was a uh, that's why it's called... Major General Lord Sterling. He fought on the American side yeah. uh, in the revolution. Right, that's what I mean, yeah. Yeah, and his exactly, uh, yeah. neighbors right at, at Valley Forge, they actually had houses that the senior officers uh, was Major General the Marquis de Lafayette, and one of my right. closest and oldest friends is a direct descendant of Lafayette, uh, Jeff D. Valet. And uh, really? so I, we always really? get a kick out of that. And he's a recording artist, and I keep saying we, if I could sing, which I can't, but uh, uh, if we uh, we should cut a record, something Lafayette and Sterling no, wait, back no, together no, again. No, listen. <laughs> I I guarantee you that just knowing your cadence, you could rap. I, I can do a little bit of yeah. orthodox chant. Uh, yeah, yeah. In other words, probably do well, 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 listen, kind of maybe that's a, maybe it's a new wave. <laughs> Actually, Maybe you can do an I Orthodox Scottish a couple times, but I sobered up the next morning and realized they were yelling at me, not with me. But <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, the, the latest news: we have some craziness going on. But uh, I tell people there's always something positive. In fact, the big thing about open media and it's that's why we have listeners in South America, Canada, Australia, and other countries where they don't have open media. And God help Obama or anybody else who tries to to squash it, because we'll use encrypted uh, peer-to-peer networks. We'll We'll put uh, uh, out on CDs. We'll find other ways of communicating because we're Americans. We're the hardest, toughest people on the planet. And as much as idiots like Obama in his two terms try to see if he can crush us and deconstruct America and the American ideal and the Constitution, which he continuously does, uh, you know, it's like the Defense of Marriage Act. I mean, it's another good example. The Congress passes it, and it's bipartisan, by the way, both Democrat and Republican, and yet the Supreme Court activist judges think that they can destroy it. Uh, yeah. You know, people and don't know he, the consequences. And, uh, Obama is in Africa now uh, promoting uh, gay marriage, and I have to tell yeah. you, uh, pretty much across the board in Africa, it's a tribal society, and... Uh, that is is just looked on as something from uh, okay. Mars. Here, here, it's it, it's here's simply what, not it, it, it's not on the table because yeah. most here, here, traditional societies have very few gay people, and well, uh, well, going there. Jim, let me give you my. It, it's it's like uh, telling people uh, in uh, Israel or, or Islamic countries to eat more pork. It's offensive to them, and it's like you've got to be kidding us. We wouldn't do that. Well, here, here's what my, my take is on the whole gay issue, okay? Uh, I think that uh, gayness and bisexuality are partly genetic, partly behavioral, but we are, have, are human beings of a higher brain. Even if we have a proclivity toward a behavior that is unacceptable or unbiblical, you just don't do it. Just like you don't have sex out of your marriage, okay? We're not bonobo monkeys, all right? Um, and what I see happening is we have two different issues. First, it's the federal issues about, uh, you know, insurance carry rights or rights of inheritorship and all that stuff. Those can be dealt with completely separate from the marriage issue. Right. You, that you is something be, I have no. You can be a right. Uh, uh, you can have rights of survivorship. Uh, exactly. In, in other words, all that, to all me, the legal yeah. niceties can can be. Right. Now here's where the problem comes. You know, Doctor Bill, yeah. I, I was. Let me let me finish this, Tim. Let, let, no. let, let, let me tell you this. Yeah. Real quick, and I used to have to do a lot of research. I, we were the experts that the experts went to about peerage law and all that. And one of the things that I ran across in in court uh, cases going way back in Scotland was the value on the family that it was the basis of society. You know, and, right. and when you when you start having uh, two daddies but no mommies or two mommies and no daddy. Or uh, maybe one husband and several wives, or one wife and several husbands, or, or all this stuff. You attack the root of uh, yeah. society, yeah. and that's the foundation, uh, the moral okay, foundation gonna... of, of the human race. Okay, let me give you my take on this, So, because there's a lot of confusion over there about the issues, and I'll make it real plain. In Canada, where they have funded health care for gay and lesbian couples, what they do is they also provide 
uh, genetic engineering in a sense, first level of it, <clears throat> so gay couples can have babies. Now, most people might think this is a good idea. I think it's a malevolently bad idea because uh, then you start doing genetic engineering. You grow human beings out of the uterus. You disconnect the human race uh, from their family line. You also maybe even eliminate entire sex because in the future, would it not be reasonable to consider that uh, sex shouldn't exist in the lower classes, the working class, and should only exist in the upper classes, or that uh, wild reproduction should be completely outlawed uh, for protection of the planet and population goals, even if you don't believe in the CO2 model. People don't realize there's an end uh, of things from when you make choices. So here's my view. Number one, I think that we should have, where all these survivorship and everything else, we don't, we can't call it marriage because it's like calling a giraffe an elephant. An elephant. It's not the same. A marriage is a man and a woman, period. Uh, so the Defense of Marriage Act is just calling something that's obvious. But I have nothing against gay couples. I think they may even adopt children. But the idea of having genetic engineered or, or the government paying for uh, benefits like they do in Canada so that they can have artificial insemination or genetic engineering to create a baby out of two males or two females. This is damn weird and what's going to happen is eventually you'll see horizontally inserted animal DNA to correct different quote genetic defects or upgrade human beings. You're going to see the many, Japanese many are already called... doing uh, human uh, right. and so, animal uh, uh, so what's the term? Uh, right. So what you're seeing is uh, I call this the bottomless pit. It says in the Bible that you know they shall open up the bottomless pit. The bottom this pit to me is a genetic pit of the book of Jasher. Uh, gay people, people in, in general. To God. God knows how to be gay. Yeah, let me finish, let me finish uh, Tim. Yeah, let me finish, Tim. What okay. I see happening is that gay people uh, in general, if they're normal monogamous people, are very caring, loving, smart, intelligent, and contributing people whether they're in the military or anywhere else. And we should not, quote, discriminate by abusing them, but we shouldn't I endorse agree. that they are, quote, they're not married. And the idea that marriage should be destroyed in order to create a benefit for somebody else, they can have those benefits. I don't see any problem with them having first survivorship, but you can't call it marriage. You can't say it's gay marriage. It's not marriage. It's a gay union. It's a gay whatever you want to call it, but it's not. And, and, and the thing is, we need to treat these people with respect. They are fellow Americans. They need to be treated with respect, but you can't call them married. It's that simple. I, I, I agree. I, I think you hit the nail on the head. And I think this idea that we and the Republicans need to have a rational approach that doesn't abuse people or treat gay people like they're garbage. They're smart, intelligent people. They're that way maybe because of their genetics, because of environmental exposure to xenoestrogens, maybe because of, of, of previous abuse or proclivity. Maybe it's just the part of the genetics of the broad spectrum of humanity. I don't care. It, it is not a reproducible part of the. Or, or both parents raised them. Uh, uh, I've, I've right, had gay it, friends, but, and I've noticed often there's a there's a uh, an issue with one or both parents but that, it doesn't uh, it doesn't really matter uh, I'll, I'll give no, you a concrete no. example if you were to take and do a psychological analysis of the number of males that are in heterosexual relationships that never do any gay activity that are married with children it's probably around let's say 10 or 20 percent of all married couples the man is bisexual but has never had a homosexual act right I probably okay. and it, Right. So what I'm trying to tell you is that whether you do it is a whole different thing of whether or not you have a proclivity. Well, I mean, you and know, a proclivity uh, may be... the male is, is kind of wired. I mean, you, you see a good-looking gal walking down the street, uh, you're going to think, wow, and so forth. But right. so, that doesn't so, mean that if you're married or if she's married that you violate, really, God's moral code. And right now, here's the point. Do, we mean, have a, know, we, I, mean, I, I was married for 21 years uh, to a wonderful woman. Uh, we're coming yeah. up on the 14th anniversary of her death, and I didn't have affairs. I, I had opportunities, and I imagine she had opportunities, but I didn't want to betray her and betray our marriage and her trust. Uh, not for right. for you know a little uh, a fling. And and but the trouble with too many people today is they don't have that attitude. It's it's uh, oh well you know I can get by with it. And pretty soon they've wrecked their marriage, and their kids are, are, well, are the, their lives are the wrecked. point too is that this wrecked, and and you if you don't have a, a halfway decent moral code, we're not. Most of us are somewhere between well, saints and sinners. Right. What about the Supreme Court code? acting? The Supreme Court too making decisions that should be made by Congress and us in our churches and our personal relationship.
come back and uh, the point on some of those discussion that I gave, which I think is balanced, is that we have an activist set of judges that believe the Constitution is living, which it isn't. The Constitution is fixed. And um, I think we need to respect all Americans, but we need to not try to, to say things that aren't. We can't change the definition of reality. And uh, we also don't want to fund genetic engineering to create in 10 or 20 or 30 years where human beings are grown in laboratory. And eventually, of course, because of the scare of population growth or, you know, if they get past the CO2 garbage and the peak population, which Obama is still pushing, and now Schwarzenegger, they'll try to say that wild reproduction is wrong. And, of course, then everybody will have to submit their gametes to a laboratory to have polar body exclusion because Fukushima is not cleaned up, and in 10 years, the radiation causes so many birth defects, not only in Japan, but in North America. They say, oh, and well, we'll guarantee you. But the government, right? The government. Well, look, look, look at Obamacare. Not the people, but the look, elite. Well, look at the government with uh, Obamacare. Uh, the doctors have to put a diagnostic code in January 1. Uh, the 50-member panel that's appointed by Obama decides what the treatment protocol is. If the doctor doesn't follow the protocol, $100,000 fine, first offense. Second offense is the big house. You go to prison, Doc. We're not going to fine you. We're taking your butt and putting you in the big house. Now, no, no government in history has done that. If you think that, we aren't, that anything else that this Obama administration has done is going to stick a stick into a rat's nest or a hornet's nest, let me tell you, the pushback from the public is going to be unbelievable when we have hundreds of corporations tied to Democrats that have got exclusions from Obamacare, yet he's going to send IRS agents flak jacketed. So I expect the, Demo- the Republicans, because Bonner is backboneless, won't attack it directly, which is to defund the whole damn thing. They'll not put the funding in to allow the IRS agents to literally do their job, which is jackbooted healthcare thugs. We won't reduce the cost of healthcare because this bill doesn't reduce the cost of drugs or unnecessary surgery or whatever. Well, it doesn't maintain it, stability in the system. Yeah, it's going to increase it. So, and everything, by the way, people understand it. Obama's not incompetent. He's a sock puppet. The people behind him are trying to deconstruct America. They want to destroy the population. They they're want to kill Granny. They want to, they're doing a damn good job. They're actually on track. And so what people need to start realizing, their real plan is to destroy the family, destroy human biology, destroy the ecosphere. Uh, don't tell us about real issues about neurospace objects or chronal mass ejections. They don't want to protect the power grid from a CME or a weapon that uh, Iran launches if we start a nuclear war with them. And they decide, well, we'll just take a barge 200 miles off the east coast and west coast, blow off a CME, and buy. Uh, you won't have power anymore, Americans. Well, guess what? All those power substations and step-down transformers are made in. Gary, guess where? Well, China. China. Uh, China's an ally, so they're going to say, say look, so, look so at, you uh, Americans... Uh, a big part of the United States is suffering uh, in, in extreme heat right now. Las Vegas is 117, right. pushing 120. And Death yeah. Valley, well, it always gets high, so it's going up to 130 or something. Uh, why? Well, because the jet stream is dipping way down. The jet stream is acting very erratic, right. but it's done that for over two years. Who broke a story but yourself and me and uh, John Moore and Dr. Zakari over two years ago that the British petroleum oil disaster, the hundreds of millions of gallons of crude oil that was sunk because we used millions of gallons of core exit to sink it, that that caused the death of the loop current. The loop current has been there for thousands of years. It's no longer there. It's dead. It's gone. And all that thermal heat energy that should be going into the thermal highline circulatory system, which is a collection of different uh, currents because they were f- discovered at different times over the last 300 years, that's not getting that heat. So that Florida current, which comes from from the mouth of the Gulf of Mexico up to Cape Hatteras and then shoots across the Atlantic and is called the Gulf Stream, that's not near as warm. It's a current of fast-moving warm water in the cold North Atlantic, but it's not as warm as it used to be. And the thermal effect above the ocean, which acts as a steering mechanism on the atmospheric jet stream, which is a high-speed current or river of air, it's, it's not there. So the jet stream is yeah. acting erratically. So for the last two plus years, we have had crazy weather. Where I'm in, in the American Midwest, we've had about a foot of rain last week. We had about five inches uh, in my neighborhood uh, one morning. And in the, literally, the, the street in front of my house was a river. 
And I mean, yeah, this, no, here's this, the point. Uh, we have had it's a pacemaker water now for two years, to, and this to, was Obama's it, decision to use the the Corexin. Now, uh, Tim, the, uh, what's happening is this is an on purpose, not an accident, but an on purpose to disrupt the loop current. It is a pacemaker, according to Dr. Peter Ward, who's a climatologist and expert on low level uh, uh, molecules like hydrogen sulfide, uh, ozone at the ground level, etc. We've had other climatologists on, like, uh, uh, that have talked about this specifically. When we have this, plus we have increase in in, in background uh, sun activity, including strobing the Earth with CMEs with ultraviolet light. We have a decrease in oxygen worldwide occurring on the planet. And we have uh, all these issues happening, none of them tied to, quote, the science that the quote, media are pushing, like the CO2 is a death gas from hell, or chlorofluorocarbons, which can't get to the upper atmosphere because a brick doesn't float in the pool. It goes to the bottom of the pool. It's stupid. What, what we have is a situation where we have the loop currents not been dealt with. There still is, by the way, uh, seepage occurring at the bottom of that gulf, the Macondo area, which translated from African means the devil's food. That's where they drilled. Exactly. And uh, they're, still, they're still using corrects at 9. And tell us, yo, come on down and have some shrimp. Well, I'm sorry. I think there's still, I think there's, there's some still shrimp that are swimming around with old eyeballs because there's still corrects it there. And I'd like to see some real testing before I eat the shrimp. shrimp. And I don't eat fish from the Pacific. And that's well, a big part of the world, you know? Well, you can, you, no, it's a big ocean. But you, what I tell people to do if you're going to eat Pacific Ocean fish, make sure it doesn't click. In other words, have a radiation detector, get your Inspector Plus. And if your fish doesn't click, Put your fork in it. If it does, walk backwards away from the fish counter. Uh, you know. <laughs> quickly. <laughs> quickly, quickly. Yeah. So now let, let, let's go through some of the uh, what I call the montage of crazy news that's going on. You know, well, Jeb Bush, the, of course, is number one yeah. on the hit parade. Is Russia has yeah. uh, just within the last two days evacuated almost all of its diplomatic staff, all of its military staff, and all civ- Russian civilians from Syria. Now, this is something you normally do right before all-out war breaks out. And right. uh, I, I'm not saying all-out war is about to break out. There are other reports saying that uh, well, we, they're stockpiling arms in Jordan and they're for a, uh yeah. August onslaught and so forth. But well, I think it's very stupid because, it, yeah, here, here's what's going to happen. Uh, we're going to get very close to what I call World War III because this is not going to be contained Middle Eastern war. Uh, this will expand to a, an international exchange of thermonuclear, biological, and chemical weapons, which will end human civilization and therefore a peace treaty is in the offing. I expect in the second term of Obama, sometime before 2016, Obama will ratify the peace treaty and the partitioning of the state of Israel and the city of Jerusalem to Al-Quds or East Jerusalem. As much as the Israelis and everybody else says it's not going to happen, the Bible, I think, is a prescient book on this issue. It's going to happen. Obama will be uh, uh, wrote as a hero, as a messiah, messianic figure, as a, as a prophet of peace for the planet, because he's brought peace to the Middle East and so restore oil so it's not cut off at the Strait of Hormuz. I see this war. If it, if is if the, anybody starts shooting, it's going to be death and destruction. Not just in the Middle East, not just worldwide. in depression. This is this is going to be a worldwide conflict that will be the big powers going at it full force. We had a discussion this morning, and I guess what the Japanese are trying to say, uh, lying, of course, so, which is every time they talk, uh, that uh, the radiation is reducing, which is there's absolutely no evidence. They're pumping the radioisotopes into storage tanks that leak like crazy and will forever. Uh, the evidence that I'm seeing from my radiation detectors, we're still seeing periodic surges of radiation. went up for two days last, uh, earlier this week to... Uh, Two times from two times background radiation of 45, roughly counts per minute up to over 90, uh, which means in your, the, literally the northern hemisphere became a hazmat site. What we're seeing is no action on the part of the International Atomic Energy Agency, the American government, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, the TEPCO, General Electric. Everybody's trying to whitewash and kind of rearrange the deck chairs on the Titanic. 
And uh, we're also not doing anything to say, and this is the nuclear terrorism issue, that on every single site where every nuclear reactor is, it's not only a danger area for extreme weather and earthquakes and loss of backup power that can cause them to go critical and release radiation like September 11th, 8th of 2011, where San Onofre had a surge of radiation after it had a hot shutdown. What we have is a situation where, and I told this to Senator Daschle back in October 2001, because <laughs> I was one of the doctors who took care of employees working under, under Reserve Admiral John Hughes at Rock Mount Knock Med, taking care of Rocky Flats Nuclear Division, and the, uh, the hazmat officers going out there and checking the site to see where the radiation was moving toward the North Platte River and what the ground level radiation in the clay was down above the, the granite underburden or heading toward the river and, and whether not any of the plutonium and other liquid radioactive waste sitting in containers on top of concrete pads, not in a shelter, uh, not in underground facilities. And I said, all I need is an APC and our, our personnel carrier that I can get under 20000 bucks. I can go in there and break through the chain link fence and blow the whole place up and make the western United States a dead zone. And then he freaked out on the phone. I said, now, do you understand if you don't have proper ways of blocking any air traffic over this area, all you need to do is have a small light airplane come in there or an APC. And I said, the hazmat officers had to come and have exit exams because they freaked out when they realized they weren't wearing rad suits. When they checked the ground level of radiation and the radioactive water heading towards the North Platte River, they said it's going to eventually hit there, uh, that the site is incredibly radioactive, but they opened it up to the public for hiking. Hiking, okay? And, of course, when they discovered this, my boss, Major uh, Swinder, uh, sorry, Major uh, John Hughes, he got a little freaked out that I knew this, and... uh, uh, I just come back from a tour with a prophecy club and I got fired on the spot because I had to do all the exit exams and every one of these guys were totally freaked and I told them the truth. Telling the truth can get you in a lot of trouble, uh, but the fact is that I'm not going to lie to quote, protect my job or my butt or my career. And the fact is that we, I've seen this repeatedly where we have a medical system that's got less backboneness and it's, to me it's not a surprise that doctors are going through uh, Obamacare. Uh, they're going through it because they've been gutless in the past and now they're backed up against the wall. Tough luck docs, you need to get a backbone, this is the place to get a titanium backbone transplant and if you have a backbone you'll ask tough questions, you'll get informed and you realize the business model is you're not going to get ultra wealthy, you're going to take care of people, you'll live a decent life and when you get retired and sick yourself you should have a pension or a place where you don't get thrown aside because you're useless or of no good to anybody. This is not the case in America. We treat people like like Dixie Cups when they get older, including health professionals. We overwork them and we force them to do things that in their own conscience and their own logic wouldn't do on their own. Uh, and this is because of state licensing boards, uh, hospital privileges committees, uh, what's called quality of care panels like the idiots that were assigned by Obama. And of course the same thing goes with the nuclear regulatory issue. So Chris, Tell us the latest what's going on with Fukushima, because this is sickening. I can't get anywhere with senators or congressmen. I can't get anywhere with anybody who thinks they know better than Dr. Diggle, and they don't. And I can prove it to them because I've been there, done that, and I can tell you it is extremely irritating to have people think that they have a point of argument when this is a desperate situation that puts everybody, not just in the Northern Hemisphere, but on the planet, constantly bioaccumulating radioisotopes from not just Fukushima, but all these plants are places where a nuclear event could happen because of bioterror, because of terrorism, or just because of station blackout or extreme weather, which is now happening regularly. Well, I'm learning new things all the time, and I'm lucky enough to be surrounded and working with uh, experts in different areas within the nuclear industry, and I'm learned, I've learned the new thing today. And that was that uh, the reason why uh, the advanced the advanced liquid processing system used at Fukushima that was hastily slapped together to do cooling and to remove cesium. Why it was removing cesium and not removing other uh, another other nuclides, such as the harder to detect strontium, where it would have been easy for them to to put an additional uh, catcher on it that it could it could actually grab um, uh, strontium. They've, they've elected not to do that, either through their own arrogance or through uh, their unwillingness to do so. And here's here's why, and here's what happened. It's easy to detect cesium, so if you grab it, you can say, well, look, I, I had this much cesium in the system, and now look at this. We do not have cesium. It's harder to detect strontium. So we won't even bother to try to grab it because it costs more money or whatever the reason. 
and so nobody else will detect it either because it's tougher to detect. But the problem is, it's also it doesn't just you, you used an analogy in your in the other part of your program about uh, thinking like a brick. I, I do you remember? Well, yeah. Well, well, cesium right. would Literally. probably do that, and it wouldn't travel as far. Strontium has the opposite effect, and it will travel very far. And so, uh, they but they have elected not to. They're not catching the strontium or the antimony and various other nuclides in their uh, advanced. I use that word in quote quotation marks. No. Advanced liquid processing system. So that's something I learned. Now, strontium today. and uh, strontium is a is a very 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 high gamma emitter. And because it is, uh, it embeds in the bone as an alternate to calcium. Uh, strontium. Some idiots think the strontium should be given in its non-radioactive form for increasing bone density, and it's really not true. You want to take a uh, proper balance of our bone generator, my cell D3, collagen max, mountain red velvet. Um, the strontium. Do you remember the baby tooth thing after the above ground nuclear testing? They're measuring actually baby teeth levels of strontium, and you have to use what's called uh, uh, n- n- nuclear magnetic spectroscopy to actually uh, bombard these with a high energy electrons to see what the spectral pattern is, and it'll actually give you a nuclear magnetic spectroscopy of what the isotopes are present in that baby tooth. They did this in the 1960s and they discovered that there were tremendous amounts of radio accumulation in the baby teeth of little boys and girls. Now these, by the way, also adopt IQ in the areas in the children within the radiation zone. They increase the incidence of thyroid disease and cause many other problems including leukemia, certain kinds of leukemia. Uh, the levels of disease that are going to be a burden, including human infertility, small for dates, uh, babies, um, microcephaly, chronic hypothyroidism, uh, many different kinds of cancer. For example, cesium-134 in animal studies, bioaccumulates and causes breast cancer at an enormous rate. So breast cancer rates after Fukushima Daiichi are going to go right through the ceiling in the northern hemisphere, uh, just so increasing cesium-134. Isn't thyroid cancer also one of the big dangers? Yes, it went up 400% percent thyroid nodules, both cancerous and non-cancerous, and now I think almost 50% of children within uh, northern Japan have thyroid nodules. So uh, we're seeing a massive increase, not just there. Here in North America, the incidence of thyroid cancer and thyroid nodules has gone up 400%. And I have a friend who actually just went through thyroid cancer. But the rates of, of mitochondrial degradation throughout the tissues of all living mammals, which have eukaryotic cells, are, uh, is dramatic. So uh, and as this bioaccumulates and increases in the environment and increases as it spreads out through the Pacific, and then you can't say where the hell it is, and it's also spreading across to the southern hemisphere with trans-equatorial high-altitude currents that travel at 300 miles an hour that carry 300 times the uh, water of the Amazon. This is not just a North American problem. This is a planet Earth problem. And uh, these idiots in the United Nations, the International Atomic Energy, are doing nothing. And our government, and Obama, who really should be a late-night TV host rather than the president, he'd probably do a good job against Conan O'Brien, but he's certainly an idiot. As long as he had a teleprompter. <laughs> oh, yeah, they can do that. He can get good writers. <laughs> Just make sure that the teleprompter doesn't have a light flash on it so he can't read it or he'll look like the idiot he really is. <laughs> like he did at the Brandenburg Gate here last week when he had his uh, his little sookie was not there working properly. <laughs> Tim, any more comments uh, about the news? Because we have, by the way, we've, we can say an unfond farewell to Jew Liar Gillard, who's now leaving the stage of Australia, the crazy uh, Australian Prime Minister pushing a green agenda and globalism. I, I think uh, the, the uh, Australian uh, politics is extraordinarily weird. I have a lot of uh, viewers is. from Australia and New Zealand to my yeah, side. Yeah, they are. The, it, it is weird, yeah. yeah and, it, of course, they're really pushing uh, this it, carbon it, credit it thing. It's very weird. I mean... Uh, the, but the more I learn about American politics, the more I, the more scared I am. Uh, just a couple things we can hit on real quick before we uh, Chris uh, gives us yeah. some more 
goodies. Uh, Saudi Arabia has seven more uh, MERS uh, cases. The global total is now 77 that we know of, but we there we now well, know lying. that there are lying there. symptomatic yeah. cases yeah. out there. So we don't really know yeah. oh, yeah. how many yeah. cases. Actually, uh, I, I've dug in and found out that there's it's widespread all over Saudi Arabia. They're terrified next month when the Hajj comes. The case fatality rate is 80 percent with MERS. Uh, it's not easily transmissible, but as the virus mutates and becomes more transmissible, even though it's got a short incubation period, or as they many release people just get another version of the virus that version, they yeah. have. Yeah. And right. Uh, and we, uh, right. That's because it got plausible deniability, and also the version that's of H7 and 9, 36 percent case fatality rate. Meaning, if you get it. Uh, and it's proven on viral culture that you have that virus, you got a 36% chance that you're going to meet your maker. And uh, that's real serious. So uh, I well, think that, we're going to see a parallel with this. a war agent right there, because when you have that right. high so, of a fatality rate, it's, it, through history, yes, there are some naturally occurring uh, illnesses that, that have that, but that, that's fairly rare, you know? I tell people they should be taking their Almax, Alamed, Allison Med, uh, Silver 100, Neutrodyne, and Immunomax, Immunoglobulin. Neutrodyne, yeah. Uh, Neutroimmune. Yeah, and they should be taking those now because the plague, I think, is going to hit. It could end any time. It could be next month when the Hajj happens. It could be in August. We're going to have a version of this in the next 2 to 16 months, I think, and that will happen parallel with the blow to the bond market. Bernanke's already basically fired, which means the interest rates are going up. The interbank rate went to 3.3 well, to, to 12.4%. Because he needs to get out and, and, and be replaced respond to this, with a Tim. guy or there, actually there, a I, lady uh, Tim, who will take the blame the, when he goes down. He, he'll, be, he'll be in Jamaica right. uh, living off but, his billion. But but here's the important part. The interbank rate for loaning between banks went from 3.3 to 12.4% as a test last week. They know how to pull the derivatives market and blow the whole world economy to pieces. And they're getting ready to do it because the globalist bankers will say they're going to pitch a fit. If you won't give us everything, we're going to blow it all up. And I think they're going to blow it all up between now and next year. Uh, everything that I hear from all my sources, including John Moore, is that they're planning and Obama's planning and the globalist bankers are planning on having a regional war expanding in the Middle East prior to a peace treaty, a blow to the bond market, and an airborne plague all happening in the next 6 to 18 months. The and when that hits, from it, hell. Right, and I'm not exaggerating when I say this. This has all been planned. In 2006, they passed the law with H5N1, the uh, avian flu, that all the countries passed over their military and the medical systems to the World Health Organization and the United Nations. Everything's in place. We have the Surveillance Society under Obama that started decades ago, long before even Ronald Reagan was in power. They're building the Surveillance Society. They now have basically the last few pieces in place and they're bold enough to say we're going to have these giant data centers that are not just in Utah. We have the, uh, they really want to destroy the middle class. They want to take away our health care. They want people penniless, starving, only working part time without benefits. They want to turn America into a slave class and copy the worst elements of what we call corporatism, not capitalism, in China, where you've got a 80 million rich uh, communists and everybody else is basically slave property of the state. Yeah, That's one, what they one want billion, to do in two hundred and twenty million are, are slaves, and eighty million are, are living right. a good life. And by the way, the, the so-called immigration bill isn't even necessary. Uh, firstly, our immigration has gone to a trickle now because nobody wants to come to America anymore, and the people that are here are stuck because their families are basically Americans without American citizenship. What we need to do is fast track it and hire more agents. We don't need a new law. We need to deport people who are either criminals or won't sign up to try to become Americans and get trained, learn a language. And do all the things to become American. That's the simple solution. We we try to create problems when they don't exist, and ones when you do have problems, we want to address them. And this is why our country and the entire world is going to hell in a handcart because we don't Here's have leaders. Quote. We have politicians. Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the guy. Less, uh, uh, I can't think of his last name. We're between a rock that's imaginary and a hard place that's imaginary right. and that's how the globalists do it that's how the bankers the banksters do it uh they created this and they they created the mess but they are tiny and we are legion we are literally billions of people and we can turn it around almost overnight if we have the will to do it 
Right. Okay. Now, to have what the will, you have to have the moral fortitude, the moral courage, hmm. the moral guts. Yeah. Tim, the uh, immigration bill clears the Senate. It cleared the Senate because these people are totally bought and paid for. I have a chance in hell that this bill is going to get through the House of Representatives. We don't need a bill. Why don't we just hire enough officers that the immigration system works, we have enough staff, and we have people forced to either sign up to become citizens or whatever. But Bonner, of course, tries to sidestep it like he did with the uh, issue of the uh, of the immigration comments to try to say it was, uh, you know, the will of these judges to do such and such. I mean, Bonner is ridiculous. I mean, but uh, uh, I don't see Washington it. Washington you know, isn't ridiculous other than a couple handfuls of people. Because well, here's the latest. Bonner orders. says... So the Senate bill, one thing that Bonner started to realize is political career is over unless he actually gets some cojones. He said here on Thursday that the Senate's immigration bill, which is poised to pass in the afternoon, is still not going anywhere in the House. In other words, Obama's trying to use edict and, and, and uh, rulemaking to change everything because he's a dictator. And when I believe our first part of our Constitution is the House of Representatives is the ultimate power. That bill that's in the, in the uh, Walter Jones bill, already Obama's done enough to get impeached by deploying offensive weapons systems, which includes the Patriot system, etc., in the war theater of the Middle East. If they start a war with Iran and with, uh, with uh, China and Russia, we will have an exchange of nuclear weapons destroying our cities. Well, the majority of people that? listening to this, including us talking, will cease to exist. Right. Now, people need to understand, I'm not just saying this lightly. I worked inside the government. I had Q-level security clearance. I worked with Dr. John Hughes and Operation Top Off with the FBI, CDC, and hazmat teams. I know these people. They're knuckleheads, they're evil, and they're stupid. And on which day, I can't tell which is the top of those items. But the fact is that unless there's some leadership here, people are going to do stupid things. They're going to get us in unbelievable trouble. And Putin, to me, we need to have a T-shirt company making Putin is good, great. I mean, Putin at least has the balls to say, no, we're not going to do to, to Syria what you did to Libya, and the Chinese are even madder. I mean, Xi, and we mentioned this yesterday, graduated from the University of North Carolina. The guy is Chinese. He lived in America. He's almost an American. He knows how America works. We should be working on business deals with them, not planning on a nuclear war. We should work out a way of versus having a trans-Siberian well, pipeline and high-speed what rail. What we're doing is insane from any human perspective. Right, and if but we want to stop pollution, we is, should put smokestacks. It's being driven by a demonic perspective. And right. uh, the, that's it. That, that's why when, when all of us, when we look at it, we say, this is crazy. Why are we doing this? Why right, well, crazy? even with China, we want to stop them from polluting? Okay, we say, okay, look, we're going to make a linkage with you better work conditions for your people so you don't have Foxconn tents and everything catching people and you don't electrify your roof. We want to put smokestack scrubbers on your factories so we'll accept your goods without tariffs. There's simple ways of using a carrot and stick and doing business to say, hey, we want to do business with you, but we don't want predatory practices or industrial espionage going in against American companies. And we don't want you to take this hard-handed approach thinking you, that you're going to want to export all our business to your country. Now, China, by the way, is now in a big wash where a lot of business is leaving China and going to India because there's more slaves, more willing to do the work at cheaper wages in India. And the Chinese are starting to get freaked out by it, which is why their economy is starting to falter. A lot of corporations are yanking them from China, and they're going to India, Indonesia, and elsewhere. And by the way, the fastest growing place where these businesses are moving is Mexico. If you go to Mexico and you see a lot of these high-tech companies, you're blown away. It's unbelievable. Most of the new nuclear reactors in the Western world... a $168 billion investment. Right. And if you look at all the nuclear reactors built in North America, they're all being built or planned in Mexico to supply power to America at major rates. Mexico. With all proper there? standards. Yeah, yeah. Well, they may not have the proper standards either, so. That's the next Firing line to the